Hello Leander ISD. We've just got done welcoming all of our staff back at an incredible convocation put on by the SCR team. And I wanted to take this moment just to reflect a little bit about the year that's ahead. I'm a huge Brene Brown fan. And she says two things that for me have really stuck through this challenging time. And the first is that we have to have a strong back. We really have to be able to stand up to the decisions we make. But we have to have a soft front. We have to be able to do it with empathy and compassion. And we're going to have to have a wild heart because innovation is going to be critical if we're going to successfully navigate these very challenging times. And the second thing that really stuck with me was when I did her core values exercise. And the two core values that I stuck with eventually were hope and future generations. And so I bring to you the thought that I have great hope in my heart for our future generations and what they can accomplish because of these challenging times. We have a great opportunity in the next year or so to really do some great learning from some very difficult circumstances and no doubt a lot of failure. And so I wanted to reflect for you three main key points that I think are going to be critical as we go forward and try to launch into 2021. And I'm going to refer to my notes, so I hope you'll excuse me. We will start school on August 13th in a 100% virtual environment. We listened to our families very carefully after their experience in the spring. And the main thing that came out to us was that they wanted more synchronous learning, more direct connection and contact with their teachers. And so that's what we've been working really hard on this summer to make sure happens in the model that we've designed for our virtual learning as we head into 2021. There'll be common platforms, there'll be normal grading now, and there'll be introduction of new content. So quite different from what the spring emergency remote learning looked like, but, and we've really been training and working hard with our teachers as we go through this, but we wanted to point out that it's not going to be perfect for all learners, and we know that. Especially for our youngest and our most vulnerable learners, this could be a very challenging environment. We're not going to know that unless you communicate it to us. And so we're asking you to please reach out if you're having challenges with 100% virtual empowered learning in your home so that we can know and understand your situation and try to reach out and meet your needs the best way that we can. The second big thing is that we hope to welcome back our students in person starting as early as September 8th. But again, this is going to be reliant on what the COVID numbers look like, what the direction from state and local agencies look like, and what our health officials are saying to us. And even when we bring back students on September 8th, we will not be bringing them all back at the same time. We are going to have to have an opportunity to make sure that we can effectively and safely conduct in-person learning. And we're going to do that in phases and start small first to make sure that we keep both our students and their families and our staff and their families safe through this entire process. Please know that all staff and students in grades 3 through 12 will wear masks as much as possible, as much as 100% of the time and we're going to be exercising social distancing all of the time. We will have to quarantine and send students and staff home if they become infected or test positive or become exposed to the coronavirus. Middle and high school teachers will be working virtually and in person with their students at the same time. And let me clarify that. Our high school and middle school students are going to be some virtual and some in person. The same teacher is going to be working with in person students in the classroom and a group of virtual students at the same time. And that could potentially be challenging. It's not perfect, but it is the best model that we have to ensure continuity of our learning and instruction over a longer period of time. And we hope that it will minimize the disruption to our students' educational experience this year. We do have a shortage of substitute teachers and that is going to cause us some problems as we go through the year if staff get sick and it may require even us closing classrooms and potentially schools um, as, as we try to figure out how to manage in that situation. 
We may need to phase in students, as I mentioned. That guidance will be based on health department recommendations. Uh, we have to protect our most vulnerable students and our most vulnerable staff. Our third thing is that our team is working really diligently to respond and to provide great customer service. But there are a lot of questions out there and there's a lot of gray area that we're not communicating effectively because we simply don't know. And so please, we ask you to be patient with us as we go forward. We are a people organization and people can only do so much at a time. And we are limited by other constraints like budget and other logistical resources. We have ticket in and help desk systems, so we ask you to please use those as much as possible. We also have great Q&As that are posted on our website and in other places, and we ask you to please reference those as much as possible before you come directly to us with a question. Know that as you have questions, you're welcome to ask them of us, and we will get to them as quickly and as rapidly as we can and provide you as complete responses as we can. But it's not a perfect system, and there may be some time lag involved in that. And when we do reply, we may not have a perfect answer, simply because we don't know. We really want to provide you great customer service. We want you to have a first-class experience. We want our students to have the best possible learning experience they can this school year. We are working as hard as we can, but we're human, and we are going to make mistakes. So we have to work together, and together we can conquer this thing. So thank you for your time and attention today. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for entrusting us with your most precious resource. We are stronger together and we are one LISD.